Hi friends, welcome to another weekend reading vlog. It is Friday and I just got done doing my workout and it's 8.45. I'm much later than I normally get started on a Friday, but here we are. I don't have to go to work until 11.30 or like 11.20 to get there on time. So I have quite a list of things I would like to get done today. So I wish I didn't stay in bed quite as long as I did this morning, but I plan on painting my nails this morning and then reading a little bit and then doing like comments and emails and stuff like that and putting dishes away. So nothing super exciting this morning. So I thought I would just check in with what I'm hoping to read. So Sunday is the last day of March. So I have three books that I hope to finish and I'll have to count up at some point to see if three will get me to 31. I'm pretty sure it will. So we'll see. But I just started listening last night to the sequel to Al Capone does my shirts. This is Al Capone Shines My Shoes. I would love to continue on with this series. I heard that it keeps getting better and better and I needed an audiobook that was relatively short. So I picked up this one or started it. I'm nearly at the end of The Lightning Thief. I should definitely be able to finish this one today. I'm loving, 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 loving this book so much. It's so fun and I cannot wait to watch the adaptation. I'm buddy reading this with Hannah. My Patreon pick for the month was Miraculous Miranda by Siobhan Parkinson. I've kind of been putting it off because I know that it's about a girl whose sister has a chronic illness and that's a little close to home for me. I don't know what happens to the sister, but it is super short. So I feel like these two, well, this Al Capone might be a little heavier. The Lightning Thief is pretty like action-packed fantasy. So this contemporary that might be a little hard-hitting is good to kind of alternate with it, except that I'm almost done with Lightning Thief. So we'll see. I'm going to take this one carefully. If I feel myself getting a little too emotional about it and it's bringing me to a place where I don't want to be, but I also feel like it could be healing. And for those of you that are wondering, what are you talking about, Krista? My brother Jordan just passed from a chronic Ill blood disease, actually. Not ex kind of a chronic illness. He was in pain his whole life. Yeah, it was definitely a chronic illness. Um, but he just passed away in November. So I'm still processing through all of that and will be for a while, I'm sure. Um, but books like this could be helpful to identify emotions and process through them. So we'll see. But those are the three priority reads for the end of the month. This is most definitely the prompt of the book that I've missed out on. <laughs> so that will be good. I mean, I have a couple others that could qualify, but that's the one. And then other than that, I'm going to the gardens today, I think, with my little dude that I watch. I don't know what's on the plans for tomorrow. I was trying to see if I could find a Good Friday service. It is Easter weekend. My church does not have one. So we'll see if I find that this morning and can go this evening, maybe maybe not. I don't know. I would think it would be nice though if I could. So we'll see. We'll see. Other than that, typical weekend around here. So come along. Let's get going. <laughs> All right. Well, I didn't nearly get as much done this morning as I was hoping to, but I did respond to a ton of comments and I just got done doing some Bible reading. I'm actually listening right now because I'm in Leviticus and Leviticus is no joke with all the laws, but I'm just thinking about how kind it was for God to give them laws that would help them to stay healthy in a time period where, I mean, there wasn't the kind of medical care that we have now and all that kind of stuff. And so it was teaching them like, these are the kind of animals that are good to eat. These are the kind of animals that are not so good to eat. And this is what you should do if you have a skin disease <laughs> and like just how to prevent the outbreak of disease and all that other stuff. So it's a lot of laws and it's a lot of kind of boring, which is why I'm listening to it. But how kind of God to help his people to last longer in a time period where people were dying really young for all kinds of reasons that are preventable ultimately. While listening, I painted my nails. I did like a little, it's hard to see. It's like pastel, pastel colors for Easter. So I just did little random, the, the nail, they don't match on hand to hand. They're just kind of fun pastel -y colors. My little dude told me he likes when my nails are light instead of bright. So I did light for Easter this time around. Um, and I'm wearing a new shirt that I just got from Love in Faith. And it says, what does it say? The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And it's like perfect for summertime because it's just like bright and fun. 
So I'm wearing this today. <laughs> I still need to finish kind of straightening my hair out a little bit and I need to eat something because it's 1030 and I've had nothing to eat today. I am gonna bust out a three-day cleanse that I'm gonna do the first three days of April. So at some point this weekend, I'm gonna have to go to the grocery store and get a bunch of fruits and veg because that is basically what I'm gonna eat for three days along with some shakes and stuff. Um, do a little sugar cleanse. I think it is about, Alexa, how many days until July 7th? Sunday, July 7th, 2024 is in 100 days. 100 days. So from today until my birthday, I'm not having sugar. I was talking to my sister about it last night. I'm going to do a little 100 day challenge. So no sweets, no discounted Easter candy from the store, <laughs> no uh, cakes, ice creams, nothing for 100 days. I think during the time that I'm in Nicaragua at the very beginning of July, I might at that point, but I'm trying to think last year, we didn't really have a lot that was desserts and sweets and stuff. So I think I should be okay even for that. But yeah, I'm going to give myself a little 100 day challenge of no sugar. Fruit is okay, obviously, but no um, processed sugar. So for my tea, I have stevia. I'm allowed to use that to sweeten a tea if I have a tea or honey or whatever. But yeah, just no straight up sugar. So that's the plan. That's part of the plan. And then a three day cleanse at the beginning of April to kind of kick some of that sugar out of my system. My brother Jeremiah is a trainer. He lives in California and he's going to be doing an on. he's going to be my online trainer for April and May. So he's going to give me some workouts and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to help him build his profile portfolio, but also it will help me as well. I need to kind of feel a little more comfortable in my skin before I go to Nicaragua, which is at the end of June. So I'm working on not like, I mean, obviously I would love to drop some weight, but the most important thing for me is to like feel like my clothes fit better and just feel a little more comfortable with who I am physically so that that's not at all a part of my thoughts as I'm getting dressed to go out and do ministry and whatever. I don't want to feel uncomfortable in the things that I have to wear. So I'm going to get get going. I've been doing pretty good with a little bit of exercise here and there. Most mornings I try to move. Oh, my light just flickered. Um, yeah. Anyways, I've got just about 45 minutes. So I'm going to go eat some breakfast and uh, finish getting ready for the day. I'm going to listen to Al Capone shines my shoes while I finish getting ready. All right. Happy Friday. <laughs> So we are just hanging in the garden for a few minutes, walking around, seeing all the beautiful flowers. There's a little bench back on our woodsy walk that we like to sit at. And it's just the most gorgeous day. It's such a beautiful day out today. So we've already sat and had an orange snack and now we're just enjoying the gardens. And we found one waterfall that's going that hasn't been going lately, right? Yeah. It's been off and now today it's going. So we're very excited about that. So we're sitting and enjoying listening to the sound of the water for a few minutes. And I did find a church to go to tonight. So I'm very excited. That'll be at seven. Oh, buddy, do you see that red bird over on the tree over there? Look right over there. Come here, come here. Come here before he flies away. Oh, he's right, he's right on that. He's right on that tree. Oh, he hopped down onto the rock, you see him? I saw. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's a little afternoon check-in. We have been working on some independent reading and we're up to 12 minutes. Today we did 12 minutes of independent reading before reading together and that was really nice. I got a few minutes to read. It was like a little mini sprint for me. <laughs> All right, we got to keep moving. So I'll be back later.
All right, my friends, I just got back home. It's 8.30 and I went to a different church for their Good Friday service. And I'm so glad that I did. It was really nice. I had to main thing the main thing this weekend. It's Easter weekend. I just felt like I needed to make sure in my mind that's the main thing. Because it is ultimately for me, Easter is more important than Christmas. It's more important than, than anything else. And obviously, like, I don't only think about what Jesus did by dying on the cross, ultimately to take away the sin of the world and then rising again two days later, which is what we celebrate on Easter Sunday. But I don't only think about that on Easter weekend, but if ever there's a time to think about it, it's this weekend. And I just really wanted to, to take that time today to reflect. Friday is the day that we reflect on the cross and all the physical pain and torture, mocking, emotional trauma <laughs> that Jesus ultimately went through because of his such great, immense love for us. I just, I just felt like I needed to spend a few minutes thinking about that tonight. So I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I did. It was, <laughs> I was basically crying the whole service. Um, obvious reasons, just thinking about Jesus and all that he went through is pretty intense. But then also, like at the beginning, they only sang two songs. Do you guys remember in my last vlog when I walked out of my cousin's church for a few minutes during the worship service because they were singing a hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, that for me is mainly known to be sung at funerals. And while I agree with the words of the song, it's a very emotional song for me. And wouldn't you know, God was like, well, you kind of walked out last week, Krista, but I want you to remind yourself that it is well with your soul because of the price that Jesus paid on the cross, ultimately. And so it just, <laughs> that got me going right at the beginning. It got me crying because I was, this church, the way that it was set up, I was like way on the other side of the room to like walk Anywhere where I could be away from where the song was being played wasn't really possible. So I'm just like, okay, we're going, we're going with it. <laughs> and they didn't sing through the whole song. They focused on the part where it talks about my sin um, not being valid because Jesus covered the cost of it, paid the price for it. Um, not that it's not valid. I forget what the words, I forget the words right now and I don't want to try to remember them. But yeah, so that got me going right at the beginning and then just a lot of the sermon was just about reflecting on what do you see to really imagine and feel. And as readers, we have very vivid imaginations, most of us, I think. And so uh, he just was talking about that at first and then read through the account from the book of John in the Bible, chapters 18 and 19, the account of what happened on Good Friday, on Friday evening when Jesus was beaten and flogged and mocked and the whole community basically turned against him and yeah just all of this stuff that happened to him and it's just it's just a lot so I'm a crier anyway so I was just crying away um but then I mean at the end we had communion communion and just began to turn our eyes towards Easter Sunday and the fact that Jesus conquers sin and death and pain and all of it he conquers it and proves it by rising him like being resurrected from the dead so anyways that's that's that. I'm glad that I went. And I just want to say, I mean, you guys know I talk about my faith on this channel here and there. Um, but if you ever have questions about anything or need prayer for something or, I don't know, just want to ask me more about my faith, I'm more than happy to, to talk with you. Um, you can shoot me a Voxer. I'm Books and Jams on Voxer. You can email me. I'm not the greatest at responding in a timely manner, but... This is important. And I think it's one of the most important things. It is the most important thing in my life. And I'm always happy to talk about it. So let's leave that there. I'm going to go put my pajamas on now, get comfy cozy, 
And I'm going to dive into Percy Jackson, totally changing gears for the night. But I just think I need to now. But I put the main thing, the main thing. And now I'm going to finish Percy Jackson. I have about four or five chapters left to go. So the chapters are kind of long. So it's a, it's about 100 pages, maybe. Maybe a little less. I'm not sure. But I don't even know where it is. I need to go get it. It's in the other room. Okay. It's 1130 and this girl needs to go to bed. But I did just finish Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and it was fantastic. And I think now tomorrow I need to start the adaptation. <laughs> the new one I think is on Disney Plus. I've heard is better than the movies. I've heard the movies are not that great. So I'm going to try the the new one that just came out, I think this past year, the last few months. It was really good. Very action packed. I was invested all the way through fun surprises, fun to talk about with a buddy all the way through. Yeah, fabulous. Very clever. I just love when an author is clever and there's like little things that just add a bit of humor or that just just add that texture to a story. Oh my word, so good. Funny at parts, heartwarming at parts, angsty a little bit at parts understandably not annoyingly so not at all like in a romantic way angsty just this boy whose dad is one of the gods and he's never known him and so that kind of tension that's there in that relationship or lack of relationship yeah so good so so good I love it it is a book that I missed and now I've read it and now I'm at 30 books but I would like to still finish these two this weekend. So I'll end the month. If I can finish these two, I'll end the month with 32 books read. So that's great. Tomorrow, the plan is to kind of get up a little early and go to a farmer's market. I want to take a look at my my three-day cleanse and, and figure out what I need for that. I know I need fruits and veg, basically. So farmer's market will be perfect. Um, not quite as cheap as Aldi, but fresher and local and all that good stuff. So I will, I will take a look at that in the morning. I'm also thinking I might get a pedicure because I might want to wear sandals on Sunday. It's going to be 75 degrees here on Easter Sunday. I don't really have like, I don't have a lot of shoes. <laughs> I buy books, not shoes. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I do have some sandals though. So maybe I've got to figure that out, but I might go get a pedicure tomorrow and I mean, stuff around the house I need to do a little bit here and there, practice worship for Sunday. But for now, I'm going to go to bed because it's 1130. That's it. Peace out. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good morning. Happy Saturday. It's 1015 and I am about to head over to the farmer's market. I made myself my little list so I know what I'm looking for. Basically, it's like all the vegetables, <laughs> but the, the dinner options are pretty specific. So I need like a cucumber and tomatoes and spinach and a bell pepper and carrots. And yeah, I have basically lots of veggies and some fruit. And that is my list. Extra virgin olive oil I need, but I probably won't get that at the farmer's market. I did finish Al Capone Shines My Shoes this morning as I was just kind of lazing around. It was good. I don't know if I, I think I liked the first one better. Uh, there's just one storyline of the girl, the warden's daughter on the island. She's just really complicated because you just kind of hate her, but then you also feel really bad for her at one point too. And I don't like feeling bad for her because she's kind of awful. <laughs> so I just, I got annoyed with her part of the story. But I mean, I guess that's realistic, maybe. I don't know. But I'm glad that I read the second one. It was on my shelves and now I've read it and it's a sequel. So yeah, I just have one book left I would like to finish this month. And that's it. I don't think I'm going to start anything else. I might go ahead and start an audiobook, but I might start one of my April books. I also this morning, well, still, I, I, my eyes started going wacky, which is like a sign of a migraine. So I immediately took some Excedrin migraine. So I don't think it's going to turn into a full-blown headache, but I couldn't drive until my eyes 
shaped up like so what happens is I lose a little I have like auras and I lose a little bit of my vision so I was eating a bowl of cereal and I was like oh my eyes are kind of going crazy so I put a little ice cap I have these like gel ice cap things that I well I have one and it stays in my fridge and I put that on and laid back down for a little bit um, so we'll see if I end up getting a migraine or not today. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping that I caught it soon enough and I took my Excedrin migraine. I put the ice cap on. I'm taking care. We'll see. But time to head to the farmer's market and then probably have a shower and stuff and go later to get a pedicure. That's my plan for the day. My full plan today. Farmer's market, pedicure. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I forget how crowded the market is. I ended up not even getting anything, but I got a good 15 minute walk in. Um, I walked over to the market, walked all the way through the market and back. There was only one farm stand. There's a lot of other stands, but the only farm stand was super crowded and it didn't look like they had a lot of what I needed. So there is another much smaller farmer's market just down the road a few minutes. So I'm gonna go check that one out. I don't think I will come to this one again. Unless I have people with me, because I feel like it will be a fun one to just stop and look at all the stalls with somebody, but by myself when I don't need anything and I always get like guilted or social anxiety into buying stuff that I don't want. <laughs> I would have bought flowers, but it's 1045, 1050, and most of the like real pretty flowers are gone. So I didn't buy anything. But I got a good walk in. I'm like fogging up my glasses. <laughs> okay, I am back home. It's 1230 and I'm actually about to head out to go get a pedicure. I obviously didn't film anything from the second farmer's market. It was way smaller and definitely more my jam. And I bought veggies that are way too expensive from a sweet little man who spoke Spanish. And so I spoke Spanish right back to him. And he was like, oh, you did good. You did good. So I told him I was going to Nicaragua and I need to practice. He's like, okay, next time you come, we speak only in Spanish. I'm like, okay, I'll try. Oh, he was so sweet. And just, there was hardly any people there. There was someone playing live music. I gave her a little tip because it just was such a better vibe for me at that farmer's market. So I wish I had filmed a little bit, but because there were so few people, it would have been a little um, obvious, which isn't always a big thing for me, but sometimes I just wasn't feeling it today anyway. So I stopped at a yard sale on my way home, which also was kind of a bust. Didn't film anything there because it was a bust. There wasn't very much stuff and a lot of people standing around just talking, like neighbors and things, which is fine. I did finish El Capone Shines My Shoes, which I think I've already mentioned. So that's two books finished this weekend. Yay for me. I am going to bring Miraculous Miranda with me to get my get my toes done. And then on the way home, I'm going to stop at Aldi to get the rest of the fruit. I got, I got, I think, almost all the vegetables that I need, but I still needed some fruit. There was only apples, and I have apples already, so I didn't need to get those from the farmer's market. But I would like some berries of multiple kinds and maybe some grapes or whatever. So I'm going to grab some fruit. Yeah, so I'm going to head out. Hopefully I'll get... Maybe some clips, maybe not. I don't know, but that's the plan. <laughs> church like in the back room where we're waiting to go out for worship team nobody else is up here yet I like to give myself a few extra minutes to just collect myself and get ready grab a cough drop my throat is a little rough today <laughs> but we're gonna make it work because it's Easter Sunday we've got some animals some goaties some sheep and a llama llama hi llama llama red pajama Hey, what's up dudes? How's it going? 
Why do the kids put him in there? I don't know. Yeah, bunny. Bunny. It's the bunny. Bunny. What's up? <laughs> you have the most beautiful lashes. He's like. Yeah. You are so cool. Are you going to try to eat my phone? You look like you're about to get up to something. You are probably the one I'm allergic to the most. Really? Yeah, horses and cats, really, but like any kind of pet gives me a little oh bit gosh. like dander. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. he's cute though. He look is. at his coloring. He is, I know. That's good. Mow the lawn. Thanks, dude. You're awesome. <laughs> we really appreciate it. We don't need lawn. Out for lunch. You say hi, Ryland. Hi. Say hi. What did you have to eat? Peace. <laughs> Hello, my friends. It is Sunday at 5.30, and instead of taking a nap, I have been watching Love Island. And I stayed up really late last night watching Love Island, and I, this is the finale. Thank goodness, because I don't want to be watching this much TV moving forward. But I did watch the one episode of Percy Jackson last night as well. And it was so good. But yeah, it's Sunday afternoon. And I don't, oh, I did talk really briefly uh, behind the stage today. Church was so good. We had almost double the number of people, but it was just really fun to like look out and see our sanctuary totally full. It was awesome. I love Easter. I, I just love it so much. I love that people get to hear the story of Jesus. And I just pray that hopefully some of them will walk away wanting more. That's all that we can hope. I feel the same. And then I was going to go to this parade, Easter Day, Easter Bonnet Parade, along one of the roads here in Richmond. But it started raining this afternoon. It was gorgeous this morning, like beautiful 70s, perfect day. And then right after church, I saw a big cloud coming. And the parade was from, I don't know, one to three or something. I don't know how long it actually lasted, but it basically rained all afternoon. So instead, I went to lunch with my friend Ryan and her daughter and her parents. And they were gracious and let me kind of join in on their Easter lunch. We went to a place called the Tipsy Crab. It was really good. I had fish tacos and yum, they were delicious. Uh, and then I came home and I was going to film. So I'm actually still in my dress from church this morning because I was going to film. But I just, because I stayed up so late and then got up early to get church stuff going, I uh, was going to take a nap. And then instead of taking a nap, I decided to finish Love Island. So I'm just not going to read today. And that's okay. I'm going to make potato soup. It's a HelloFresh meal that I need to make because it's here and I've got all the things for it. It's loaded baked potato soup and it sounds amazing. So I'm going to make that tonight. I've been talking to my brother, Jeremiah. He is a personal trainer and he's doing some online clients and he's going to be my trainer. I think I talked about this for April and May at least and maybe more moving forward. And it's a good challenge for him because I don't have a gym membership. So I don't have access to a bike or a treadmill um, for cardio stuff. So he's going to kind of give me like full body strength, but like circuit style workouts with the weights that I have available to me here and I have resistance bands and I have a few other things. Um, so he's gonna, he's gonna set me up with a plan and I'm gonna follow it. I start tomorrow with a three day cleanse, which I talked about. So I'm all set for that. I'm very excited and yeah, ready to go, ready for April. I need to pay my rent today too. I need to walk over to my landlords and pay the rent. So I'll hop on maybe one more time tonight, maybe two. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, I'm going to finish this episode of Love Island and find my journal. Maybe I'll find my journal first because I can work on that while I'm watching. I just feel like I need to, to pause because I had been sitting here for two episodes or something. So I needed to get up and move around a little bit and check in with you all lovely people. <laughs> All right, I will. I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, I think this is going to be my last clip of the video. It is nine o'clock. This one will be a long one though because I just went through this reading challenge thing that I have. I forgot I was meant to be doing some of these every time I vlog and I haven't. And here we are at the end of March. So I just marked a ton of them with a post-it 
of ones that I've done. So we're going to go through that. But first, I just want to say I'm so excited. I just FaceTimed with my brother, Jeremiah, who is a new personal trainer working on building up his online um, plans for people and like doing some training online for people who are far away. So I'm like, well, sign me up. I can help you get like a different demographic. I'm not a gym rat. I don't actually have a gym membership at all, but I have a lot of weights here at home and bands. I just FaceTimed him and showed him all the different workout kind of stuff that I have here. He's going to um, be my trainer for the next two months. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk to you about Clever Fox. Um, Clever Fox reached out to me and asked if, if they could send me some journals to share on my channel. And I was like, uh, yes, please. So I'm really excited about this one in particular. This one is the fitness food, fitness and food journal, second edition. I think the first one was either just fitness or just food. And they've kind of combined it into this option. Look at this color. It's like a shimmery blue. I love it so much. There's some fun stickers that come with it in the back here. Oh, they're so cute. It's undated, which is really nice. It gives you like a starting point and a place to write your goals. It has all of these monthly calendars that are undated. So I'm going to try to use this for April and May. And then there's like a monthly review page. And then the majority of the book are these daily tracker pages where you put what your workout was for the day, what your food was for the day, how you're doing with your goals, how did you, how was your mood, all that kind of stuff. And there are a whole bunch. <laughs> of those pages. That's the rest of this journal. I, I'm not always been the greatest in the past with using a, a hard copy journal. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm going to try to use this for April and May and really kind of jumpstart getting a little bit back to a bit healthier before summertime. I'm excited for that. And thank you to Clever Fox for sending me this journal. I will put a link down below of where you can check them out. There's a lot of really cool ones. But yeah, I'm excited to try this, this fitness one for April and May. I don't know if I ever got on and finished telling you about Miraculous Miranda. So I thought might as well take a minute to wrap up my reading for the weekend. And I will start with Miraculous Miranda by Siobhan Parkinson. This is about a young girl whose sister has a chronic illness. And she's in school. She's a really smart little girl. But near the beginning of, of the book, her sister has to go to the hospital and her parents kind of go with the sister and the grandma comes to stay with our main character, Miranda. Obviously, it's in the title, Krista. It was cute. Uh, she's really, she's a really funny kind of girl, like super smart, loves coming up with the word of the day. She has a fantasy, what is it called? Not like how some people play fantasy football, but it's like fantasy, I don't know, some kind of world building. And she just kept adding to this world that she created. There was a story within a story at the end. She writes a story for her sister. Um, there's a little bit in here that tugs at the heartstrings a bit. But overall, I found this to be a little choppy. I never felt fully connected to Miranda. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. It would probably be more like a 2.5. Um, for me, I just didn't connect with it as much as I was really kind of hoping to. But there were, yeah. But it, I do think it's important to have stories like this because it's a very real thing. And her feelings of anger and uh, feelings of abandonment by her parents and just feeling like overlooked because she's the healthy one in the family. Um, yeah, a lot of things that just uh, could be relatable in my family in dealing with Jordan as he was growing up and just sick all the time. So um, definitely could could relate but I didn't feel as emotionally drawn in as I wanted to so good but not great I did finish El Capone Shines My Shoes also only gave this one three stars I really loved El Capone Does My Shirts I really loved it and I think maybe because it was a surprise like I wasn't expecting to love El Capone Does My Shirts and this one, I knew a little bit more what I was getting into, but I don't think the story of this one was as compelling as the story of the first one. This one really just continues some of the storylines from the first book. Uh, it deals a lot more with Moose, our main character, and 
he's a bit of a people pleaser. And that was a big part of this one. Like everyone loves Moose, but he's not really being honest with himself. He's just kind of trying to make everyone else happy all the time, which is understandable when you know his situation and all that he had to deal with in the first book. Um, but I still love his relationship with his sister, Natalie, who is neurodiverse. I just think their relationship is really special. Um, and yeah, still good. I don't have any others in the series on my shelves. So I'm not like chomping at the bit to finish this series, but I'm glad that I read two of them this month. And then I absolutely loved Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. I just loved this. I gave it five stars. I read this with Hannah, who's on Instagram. Hannah Hart six, I think is her Instagram. I just absolutely loved this. I thought it was a blast. It was fast paced and engaging and clever. And Percy was just such a cool character who was loyal and brave and courageous and um, kind and smart and witty. Like, oh, I just really, I just really loved this one. Another one, though, that I'm like, I'm not going to run right out and buy the second book or even borrow the second book from the library right away. But it will be on my series list now because I've started the new series and I would like to read it. I would I would be fine to continue because I absolutely love this one. I think I gave it five stars. Like I really, really loved it. Really loved it. I loved how it wrapped up. I loved how it kind of left the door open for more in the series, but the story from this one was wrapped up. So that was great. So that's my reading that I finished this weekend. Three books which brings me to 32 books for the month. And I did not read anything today. It was kind of nice to just take a day off from reading. I read zero. I didn't open a magazine. I didn't read an article, nothing. I watched Love is Blind, did church stuff and hung out with a friend. It was like perfect, <laughs> perfect ending to a crazy fun month. But let's go ahead and do some openings from the reading challenge. Okay, I've kind of got it on my lap now. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and open up a whole bunch of these. I'm going to start over here. This one is read a book about a person with a disability. I read Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus for this one. Let's see what it is. Oh, cute. That's a cute magnet. Eat, sleep, read. That is going right out on my fridge. I keep tons of magnets on my fridge. I love that. Go right down here. I did this one. Read a graphic novel. This month I read Cody and The Keeper of the Lost Cities, book one, and The Secret Garden on 85th Street. So I read three graphic novels this month. This feels like a little pad of paper, maybe. Books are greater than everything else. That's cute, a little post-it pad, which I do keep in here because when I do buddy reads, sometimes I like to try to take notes. I don't always do that, but I try to. There we go. Let's see. This one is listen to a reading themed podcast. I listened to the currently reading podcast. I was a little bit behind, but I have done some over the last couple of weeks. What is this? Oh, a little pin that says the book was better. I do not use pins. So this is going to go in the other room where I package up Pango orders. When people order a bunch of stuff, sometimes I throw in little things like this for fun. So I could throw that in a Pango order for sure. So then we move over to this one. Read a book that has been sitting on your shelf unread for more than a year. And I read Poison Study by Maria V. Schneider, which is like the oldest or one of the oldest books on my TBR on Goodreads. My want to read or my... Yeah, just my Goodreads TBR. Let's see what this is. Reading notes. That's cute. That's another thing I can just keep in this room to use for buddy reads. I'll, I'll make use of that. Right next to it here is read a book that features an indigenous person. And I read We Still Belong by Christine Day, who is an own voices author. So let's see what's in this one books and glasses and tea. That is a cute little tiny bookmark. I love it. Two more. Read a book published this year. And I read The Unmaking of June Pharaoh, which was a new release. Newer release just came out a couple months ago. 
I don't think it came out in 2024. Oh no, I was going to do the Mona Lisa Vanishes. It was a 2023 release, but within the last year, I'm counting it. <laughs> Cute, noteworthy. These are little post-its as well. Noteworthy and brilliant thought here. Those are cute. And then we have here, participate in a book club in person or virtually. And my patrons and I participate in book club every single month. Oh, cute little library card post-its. So post-its, post-its, post-its. <laughs> a little notebook, more post-its, a magnet, and a bookmark, and a pin. Fun! Yay! I just found one more that I have to do because it was middle grade March. <laughs> and almost all of my reads were originally intended for children. <laughs> I couldn't ignore this one. So let's just see what this last one is. Oh, stickers. Little bookshelves. I'm not a big fan of the cat ones, but those are cute stickers. All right, that was fun opening all those little things. <laughs> I am going to wrap things up here, though. Thank you so much for watching, hanging out with me this weekend. I'm sorry I didn't get as much B-roll as I normally do, but it is what it is. I had a fantastic weekend, a fantastic Easter weekend, and I hope you did as well if you celebrate. Um, and if not, I hope you had a great weekend anyway. <laughs> um, and again, I... I'm always here if you need prayer for anything or if you want to ask any questions about God or anything along those lines, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to talk to you. And thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me for a little bit. I really appreciate you being here and being a part of this little corner of the internet. You guys mean the world to me and I'm so thankful for you. And I hope that you have a wonderful week and a start to a new month. Yay! I love it. All right, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.